Hedge Hedge, ladies and gentlemen, it's currently Thursday, April 7th, 2011, and this is Day 9 Daily number 282. Oh, today was such an adventure because the majority of it was interrupted by the fact that I need new glasses. Uh, as many of you know, I left them at MLG, and for some reason in the two years that I've owned the glasses, I've completely forgotten how much glasses cost, and Calling Everywhere kind of did the big reveal of, yeah, it'll be like $400,000, so... After having to drive pretty much everywhere, I eventually landed myself at Costco, where everything is huge. And while we're waiting for the glasses to come in, it's always a fun little adventure seeing everyone exit out of the Costco, because it's never something, you know, like a jar of peanut butter, a jar of jelly, and a loaf of bread. And you can sort of conclude what that person's doing. This is like 40 crates of soy milk and a 12 by 12 like missile launcher full of like Worcestershire sauce. And that's it. That's all this woman is buying. I'm just kind of have indigestion. You get worried. I had to try to think of as many stories as I could of the people exiting out the store. And you should too. These are the sort of activities that you become uh, infatuated with when you work at a grocery store where I worked for many, many a year as a wee little boy. But now I've graduated on to talking to a camera alone in my room. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! I'm on the upswing in life. Now, let me tell you, today's topic is going to be the same sort of thing that we were looking at yesterday. It's going to be a hardcore analysis of the Terran vs. Protoss matchup. But something concerned me a little bit. I don't want to single anybody out. I could because I have the chat window open right there and I could single you out and I could be like that man. Everyone would point and laugh and I'd get my admins to ban him and he'd have to go home crying. But I'm not going to do it. Someone said yesterday was a Protoss vs. Terran analysis. No, no, negative. Look at that. Some people are like, what? Ah, oh, freaking out. It was not, it was a Terran vs. Protoss focus thing. What happened yesterday is we spent an extremely long time trying to count and estimate what the Protoss would be doing uh, at certain points in time and think of ways that we could exploit them as a result of that situation. Now, the huge thing to note is we spent a lot of time focusing on the Protoss because what we're doing is trying to establish a read. When you're playing as Terran, you don't get to look into the Protoss's base. What you have to do is you have to get little bits of information at the front and make wildly accurate judgments based upon them. And that's what we're trying to poke around with and test. We're going to take a look a little bit more on some Terran related things, but it's so important to look at that relationship to try to figure out everything that is going on. I just want to make some brief announcements before we jump into the hardcore analysis. Next week's Funday Monday is the, um, I guess not a, a single mono battle. It's the kind of similar theme to a team mono battle. At the start of the game, you publicly announce three units, the only three that you will make all game long, and then you must only make those. Queens do count. You can make like one queen per hatch, that's fine, just to do macro, but if you're going mass queen, that counts as a unit. So you can be like Zergling Queen Broodlord, and that would be cool. Uh, observers do not count. Observers do not count. Overseers count unless you really need to get one to like get some detection. But if you want to go like mass overseer, that counts, right? Three, three units, this many units, and that's it. Uh, and you do those all game long. Monday at day9.tv, submit those there. And by the way, dear admins, if you could begin looking through those, that would be wonderful. Also, next week's newbie Tuesday, a special topic. And I think actually next week we might do the same thing that we're doing with this Terran vs. Protoss. Do a little bit more of a hardcore focus on Terran vs. Zerg for two reasons. One, Zerg players have this crazy larva mechanic so things aren't smoothed out. We can't say something like every 30 seconds a gateway unit finishes, so as a result we can end up calculating how many gateway units he should have. The larva pops off at sort of a staggered rate. So we want to be able to figure out how to make judgments based on that when we're playing as Terran. And the second more important reason is that that is far and away my worst matchup. I feel pretty comfortable in every single matchup, except Terran against Zerg. I'm so bad at it. I'm just horrible. Everything's bumpy in the early game. So I want to try to figure some good stuff out. I also want to point out a little article written by Spanishiwa, where he does a little cool suggestion that uh, you shouldn't get gas until like 45 as Zerg against anybody. And that ends up being pretty darn suave. It's something that a lot of people have experimented around with, such as Tialo. Uh, but of course, there is now a place where you can go and read and download tons of replays of him against a variety of folk. Go to Team Liquid and look up Spanishiwa. So, without any further ado, let's delve into the Terran vs. Protoss hardcore analysis of today. Let's briefly review what exactly were some of the big concepts we came up with yesterday. 
First of all, I wanted to come out with a goal. My goal was a hardcore Marine Marauder medevac composition with a lot more expanding and aggression and a lot less fancy unit variety. A lot less, ooh, I'm going to open Banshee and transition to some tank and I'll have some Marines and Marauders and medevacs sprinkled in there. No, I want to be like hardcore about that, devote myself to that right from the get-go. So that was a limiting factor. So for instance, if I'm in StarCraft 2, this is the sort of thing that I would do where I would download a ton of Terran vs. Protosses and then I would get, you know, a little bit ways through the game. This is an exercise that we did yesterday, so important that I do again just really, really fast. Excuse me, this is one of the most recent games on sc2rep.com. And then I see a factory go down and I think, oh no, I hope to God he's not making tanks because that is not the sort of opening I want to mirror. And then it turns out, oh, making tanks, so I just quit right out of it. That was a pretty important topic that we did. We establish a goal, then we start blasting through as many replays as we possibly can because we want to get a good sense of the replays that we do want to end up analyzing. So that was the first one. That's the same thing that we're going to end up doing today, beginning with that goal and looking at all our replays under that umbrella. The second thing, uh, which was more of like specific to the games we looked at, we were trying to begin to count gateway units at certain times. And we wrote a lot of times down in our StarCraft notebooks. That way we could go double check. We wanted to look at these times to get a check as to what he could be doing in his base based upon the units we saw. And we really emphasized this idea of counting what sorts of units we ended up seeing. And that way we can make some big judgments as a result. And what we slowly found is that when it should be units going up three or four at a time, because he has three or four gateways, when we start noticing going them up one or or maybe two at a time, we can pretty strongly see that this is an indication that the uh, Protoss player is in fact going for an expansion and a robo around the same time. If we see a Nexus, like maybe poke with a scouting SCV, and we count that there aren't that many more gateway units, we know he's probably going for a Colossus, so we can end up doing a really, really strong timing push within the next two minutes. And we saw this pattern in Night End versus Beastie Cutie. I just want to note, um, which was the other game we ended up doing? Or excuse me, Mana vs. Beastie Cutie. This is the one thing that we're going to see. We're just going to blast through this for review because it's a really important thing to note. We're just going to end up seeing that play itself out in this game. So a lot of unit counting is what we did. Now I want to look at a little bit more from a Terran-esque point of view. I want to be trying to compare a couple of games. I'm going to compare some Huck and Greefort games. One that worked well, one that did not work so well. We're going to start trying to highlight some differences between the two. So here is the moment that I want to point out in this game, where we end up seeing these gateways um, start to pop out. Um, yep, there is the expansion going down, and we see three units at a time popping out here. So we're going to see the pylon finish, and then whoosh, we have some more units that end up warping in. And at this point in the game, we end up having 12 units out there right now. Um, and that's when we started to do a lot of counting. And we noticed that the instant, the instant, this guy starts going for a robotics facility, look at these gateways. Look, three, four gate, four units able to be made. None actually getting produced. Oh, there's three units that get warped in, but then still, back to four in the queue. And that's because this whole time we were going for the Colossus. So that does mean that we can begin to make some conclusions, such as in this game, that when we started to see those 12 gateway units and saw no more, we're pretty darn sure that Colossi are coming. So, what I want to take a look at is a game where no Colossi are built. I want to delve really hard into this third game between Huck and Greetorp. Because Huck does not actually end up rushing for that Colossus. So what we first want to end up doing is we want to try to blast through uh, to see, again, is there any sort of, I don't know, factory units getting made, any sort of banshees getting made. The answer is going to be no. Um, I can just tell you that right now. Let's go ahead and double check some timings as our Terran buddy. What we're going to see Greetorp do is he's going to do this sort of early expand. Uh... And look at Huck. That was so effing nice, by the way. That's because Greetorp just manhandled his opponent in the previous game. And we will end up looking at that game a little bit more in depth. But what I want to start to try to notice is, oh, hey, this command center is getting started. So important that we can note our timings. So important that we can notice that there's some timings coming up. Okay, cool. When this one zealot is around halfway done, that's when we start our command center. 
And this is pretty fun because we know that this Marine is actually free to move out. Actually, when we're at two Marines, I would probably be still pretty comfortable moving around the map because, you know, at worst there's one Zealot, even if it rushes straight towards us. Now, first, I want to get a sense of some general trends. What's about to happen is I'm about to analyze this replay and compare it sharply to the previous game, which was actually the last game we looked at yesterday. We're going to compare it very, very sharply. We're going to use some of the education that we gained yesterday, but we're going to do a lot of juggling back and forth between those games. And then we're going to wrap up with a game of Druby and compare this again to Night End. We want to create a lot of data points. A lot of different data points. So here we see Bunker going down for the Torp. Now, I do think this is an early Bunker because, hey, you know what? We said Warp Gates finish at around 6 minutes. We're at around 5 minutes. Is there any real threat? Well, we have these two Stalkers and a Zealot. I, yeah, you know, maybe this is a reasonable plan to do because we're just going for a Barracks and a Tech Lab right now. Will we be getting Stim right now? Let's find out. Or are we going for a Factory? Yep, there's Stim. Now, a lesson we learned yesterday, if a factory is started right now and no more gas is spent anywhere else, literally, if our factory starts right now and no gas is spent anywhere else, we'll have around 250 gas right when that um, starport and reactor finish. So that way we can make two medevacs at a time. So l l let me just actually do that in StarCraft and Notebook fashion. This is, oopsie daisies, ah, oh, come on, come on, Notepad. There we go. Forgot I disabled my Windows key. So we would have somewhere in a StarCraft notebook that if you if you start factory with um, 100 gas, as in you drop down to zero when you build it, and you have two refineries going, you should have uh, around 250 gas when the starport finishes building, assuming you're building a reactor on the factory. This is the sort of note that's really, really useful. I mean, if I were doing shorthand, I would be like 100 gas plus 2 ref equal uh, reactor port plus 250 gas. Um, this is a very useful timing to know because let's suppose for a moment that Gretorp builds five more barracks, so he has six total, and expands here and starts going mass marine marauder. Like mass marine marauder. Suddenly, Later on in the game, when Huck says, I want to begin making medevacs, he can just go, boom. If I have about 100 gas and I start the factory, right when I have two refineries, I'll have about 250 gas. If I, you know, if I do 100 gas plus one ref plus start the refinery, uh, I'll have reactor port plus uh, exactly 200 gas. This is a good way to, to begin setting some benchmarks. This is important to have a lot of these sort of timing notes. Notice that this can happen at any point in the game, not tied to anything whatsoever. So let's start doing some counting, shall we? Let's start doing some counting. We just saw... We just saw those three units, right? We saw three units come out. For the record, if you generally see three units, you can pretty strongly anticipate that he's not going to be four warp gating you unless it's a very sentry heavy four warp gate. It's a little harder to do that. We're going to see the Torp, Dr. Gree Torp, begin making uh, a good amount of Marines and Marauders. Now, what, what were some other countings that we did yesterday? Oh, it looks like he did a scan. He wanted to check here to see if there's any sort of expand going down. I would be a little careful to do that right at that point. Now, why is that? Why would I be careful? For those of you who tuned in yesterday, why do I not like that scan? And I want you to think about this fact right here. Why do I not like that scan? Why do I not like that scan? I mean, I mean, uh, fiends, fiend, 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 oh, fiend destiny. I was like, fiend destiny? I like could not make that out. So it's because it's early in all caps. Uh, ultra specific. Ultra freaking specific. People are saying because, you know, oh, you lose 270, um, 270 mules. Yeah, a lot of people are saying, ooh, ugh, okay, looks like, oh yeah, people are saying, I'm a new viewer, oh, and this sort of thing. Yeah! Eticus, first player, first person I see to poke, uh, to state the exactly kind of what I want. It's so important that we're thinking about decisions in terms of a relationship. Not in terms of just, this is what I have. 
For instance, someone noted, and I'm not going to say who because I do not vilify people. Huh? Someone said you lose 270 minerals because a mule's worth 270 minerals. Well, is that 270 minerals, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Did we gain more or less information? 270 minerals, in a general sense, doesn't mean anything. If you say you lose 270 minerals, which you need to build two extra bunkers, now we're saying something, right? Now we're really like, oh, you know what? This scan could potentially threaten us for a timing push that comes at X mark. I want notions to be really specific. The reason I didn't like the scan is that this is right when warp gate is gonna end up wrapping up. So in a sense, what we could end up doing is we could actually wait, we could wait on the torque meter, and if we wanted to, we could probably count to, uh, you know, six minutes and 15 seconds, and then send a scout SCV out. And what would we see? Let's just see what we'd end up seeing. Well, we'd see those units, but hey, in, in a little bit, we would end up seeing these other sentries here as well. That's actually so much easier. We can just send an SCV right to here. And see, Greetorp's doing a smart thing. He's building a bunker. Why? Because he scanned and he saw no expo. That's fine, right? I don't, I don't actually mind that logic. But I want to point out how much knowledge can be gleaned from scouting the front. Or even we can see that we can kind of sneak our way down here. But if we wait till 6 minutes and 20 seconds, we can end up doing a pretty strong poke out. And here's a third barracks coming down from Greetor. I'm going to remove the production tab because I don't want us to do any sort of looking at um, what Huck's doing. Now, what's going to happen right now is I'm going to try. I'm trying to make some judgments on what he's doing based upon what I'm seeing. Really, very, very specific. Uh, well, I know the warp gate units warped in about 6 minutes and 15 seconds. I know those warped in about 6 minutes and 15 seconds. So at about 7 minutes and 15 seconds, he should have, uh, let's see, around 10 to 12 gateway units. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good. That's great. Where did I get that 12 units from? Well, we would refer back to our StarCraft notebook. Um... Where is it? There it is. Gosh. Ugh. My notepad documents. Thank you very much. There we go. Was hiding beneath my overlay. In our notepad document, we would end up saying something like... Um, uh, we'd end up saying something like four warp gate units at um, six minutes. And 15 seconds plus um, 3 per 30 seconds equals around 12. Around 12 at the 7 minute and 30 second mark. I'm giving a little teensy tiny little bit of leeway. I'm assuming Huck might not have the most perfect production. And as we see, this is essentially what's going on. If we actually look around here, are there any more units? No, that's actually just about everything. And as we even investigate, we're starting to see that Huck... Uh, it does have these three warp gates churning out. Now, based upon this, based upon this amount, on this composition, what other judgment can we make? I'm seeing not that many stalkers. I'm seeing more sentries and zealots. So I'm assuming something else is getting made. Because again, if you're making the cheaper warp gate units, you have more money to do something else. So a reasonable, good, seasoned Protoss player would likely be doing something like expanding or taking a robotic facility. This is all stuff that we pointed out to ourselves yesterday. And as it turns out, this is actually correct. That's exactly what Huck is doing. So we're going to go back to the Torp cam. We killed one unit, two units, three units. We don't actually need to do that much counting of what we kill. We only need to do counting of what ends up staying alive. Uh, will we end up seeing anything more? Well, you know what? Let's see here. 12 units came up at 7 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, so we now see 6 stalkers. And here's going to come some fairly important counting. I'm removing the production. Greetorp is just now finishing stem. It's beginning to blast his way out. I would imagine another 3 units are popping out right now. Okay, we see 1 unit popping out right now. We want to do some pretty heavy counting. Notice that in that first battle, we saw about 12 units. We would expect another three to roll right on out if we were, uh, if he was trying to really keep up the aggression. 
And because we saw three stalkers within that next minute, three stalkers within the next minute is going to indicate to me that he's probably not building anything else extra. And then we see a fourth stalker, but we're not seeing anything additional. If by around nine minutes, okay, well, I'm seeing another stalker. There's another stalker, okay. I am going to state right now, he has not built anything else. Good, good, my read was dead on. And look, Hux actually broke on the money front. He can actually just barely now begin doing things. All right, did you see what happened in here? Let me actually restate this whole process again. What I'm doing is I'm trying to state my judgment call based upon what he's doing by reviewing what these compositions are like. So right now, Warp Gate should be finishing. Is that judgment correct? Yes, that's just a little bit of a timing thing. That's fine. But now I want to begin counting compositions. We're going to do this one more time completely. And before, in my notebook, here was a theory that I had. I had this theory that is here in my notebook sheet. Uh, do not save that one document. Okay, cool. That says the following. More stalkers equal expensive equal less new buildings built. More centuries equal cheap equal new stuff built. Nothing being built equal more buildings, lulls, because nothing being built is the cheapest of all. And see, let's go ahead and restate everything we just said again for clarity. We're trying to, again, start to make some really clear judgments based upon what we're seeing at exact times. So at this point in time, we're approaching the 7 minute and 15 second mark, around 7 minutes and 30 seconds. That's when we would anticipate around 12 units coming out from a 3 warp gate around 12 units because we had around four at the six minute and 15 second mark yep here comes these units and you should be able to do some lightning fast judgments on this we can count here five zealots four sentries three stalkers that is in fact around 12 units i actually generally think it's around 13 um if you're really being hardcore about it um there's one there's a, some little stuff about control that i'm not actually going to go into right now i'm focusing on the counting and the judgment and to review, we saw a lot of sentries and not a lot of stalkers. And what did our notebook say? Our notebook said, more stalkers expensive, less new buildings, more sentries cheap, new stuff built. So I'd anticipate an expansion. That was a correct read. I would, uh, and then, let's keep on going. So we're going to continue to count units. No new units, no new units. It's been about 40 seconds. Oh, gosh. Three more units. Okay, cool. So around 8 minutes and 45 seconds, we should see another three units. If I don't see another three units, I'm anticipating another uh, set of structures being built. But no, look, the pressure has been continuing to ramp up. If I see any more units by the nine minute mark, I'm gonna be able to conclude pretty clearly that, wow, look, there's some more units coming up. All right, we see more units coming up, so that means no additional buildings. And as we can see that that is the, the most exact correct thing to be able to analyze or, excuse me, to be able to deduce from everything we ended up seeing. Again, it's all about this unit counting that I'm going to be ending up doing. We haven't talked as much about timing or control or in-game decision-making. None of that jazz, really. We're seeing the Torp end up moving out. Let's try to continue counting. We're seeing him push out with a lot of stalkers around 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Basically, anytime I see units, I, I whip out another 30 seconds. Um, we see one, looks like there were about five stalkers there. I'm seeing two new units. Uh, looks like another three new units. Yeah, there's three zealots there. So I'm probably, probably assuming that nothing else has been built. Good, good. Nothing else has really been built. Is Huck broke? Yeah, it looks like Huck's pretty darn broke because he's making some of these expensive units. Now, if this was three sentries, I would immediately begin to assume that something else is being constructed. So I'm going to begin advancing on right along. No big problem. No biggie, no biggie. Confirming some of our suspicions about that timing. Oh, look, and there's three sentries getting constructed. Now, everyone is going to kind of talk about the intuitive army mixes, right? Everyone's going to talk about, oh yeah, if you throw some sentries into your zealot stalker mix, that's great. You can force field and guardian shield. Huzzah! But of course, 
everything that you hear me say in all the past detail or dailies is like, yeah, focus on economy. It's about the money distribution and all this stuff. We are now seeing it from the reverse point of view. From just my point of view, I'm so cuddly. Mm. From just my point of view, I need to think in the terms of if I make lots of centuries early, I save up money and I can do things. So you need to think from the reverse angle as well. If I'm Gretorp, I want to be thinking right now, oh, three centuries. This is right when Huck should be starting some other structure. I'm going to pin it on the robotics bay. Uh, and it looks like nothing quite yet has been built. So, hey. At the very least, I'm almost right. Now, what the hell does that mean, right? I want to say something like, oh, Sentry's going down. He's starting to add on something. At best, he's starting to add on something. Now, if he's awful, like if Huck sucks and he only makes three gateways all game long, all the judgments that I make are still going to be true. That That's actually kind of a, a weird, funky concept. Um... The easiest way to sort of state it is in numbers. Let's say um, there's some circumstance where a really good player could only be adding on two more gateways. So we started with three, I did this counting, and could only be adding on two more gateways, and I have a timing push that defeats a five warp gate play, right? That's my style. Again, I'm going to write this out explicitly. All right. S suppose the following is true. I see three sentries at time... Uh, let's see here. Time 10 minutes, right? If I if I see three sentries at 10 minute, then I can and uh, I conclude it's a five gate play. I have a timing push that smashes a five gate. Like let's say this is true. Let's say this is all true. At best, he's actually adding on those two gateways. That's the best case scenario. Is he's adding on those two gateways for him. If he's just some terrible, awful player who's incapable of macroing that well, that's fine, because if my push beats five gateways, it still beats three gateways. That's what I mean by everything I say is still true, even if he's not doing what I'm doing. So for you low-level players who aren't against master-level, actually grandmasters like Huck, who, can, who, who are thinking something like, well, how can I use this timing? You know, against the Master League players, sure they'll be adding on a Robo, or sure they'll be adding on more gateways. Ugh, it just won't work out for me. Well, it kind of still does, because you're assuming that he's doing 5-gate, but he's only doing really 3-gate. So let's actually come back here. So the fact that, hey, Gretorp, uh, from your point of view, I'm actually thinking to myself... Huck's probably going to be making more stuff. And as we can see, yeah, you know what? Huck's money actually is high enough for that. So based on our unit, count unit counting techniques, actually, how many units ended up escaping from that battle? Based on our unit counting techniques, we're in good shape. So it looks like seven units ended up escaping. Was that right? Seven units? Uh, yeah, I actually am surprised seven was right. I actually thought it was a little bigger than that, but as it turns out, I incidentally was correct. But I would still anticipate more things being built from the Protoss front. Man, look, another round of stuff going down. But those three sentries indicated to me that he's probably doing some sort of tech. And there, indeed, we have some more gateways going down. So do you notice how Gretorp has just been under Additional pressure this entire depots. game long? Additional supply depots. However, we're starting to be able to make some pretty reasoned uh, assumptions. And in particular, these, these medevacs that just popped out, medevacs take 42 seconds to build, they take less than a minute. This battle happened about one minute ago, so that means we can likely begin to try to abuse our opponent um, with medevacs, and there's not that much that he can do about it. There's the double eBay going down, the most supply block of supply blocks occurring. So, in my Terran pants, I have begun to identify that absolutely... Everything is going in my direction. Like, I am doing just fantastically. Uh, in terms of judging what he's doing, despite having only thrown down one scan at the 5 minute and 45 second mark, and having only seen some big battles at the front. Now, I'm going to do a quiz. I was kind of intentionally talking about some other stuff, because it's true. How great it is that in Gretorp's position we can end up doing all this analysis. But, however... I want to ask. We were counting units. We said seven units ran away. How many units should Protoss have right now? Let's take a quiz from the audience. How many gateway units should Protoss have right now? Um, 
start to make some statements. Uh, and I want some people to actually say how long it's been since the last battle. Things are varying wildly. Some people say seven, which would mean that there's been no new production. We have some around 18, 14, 16. So what we really need to be able to do is be able to rewind. Goodness, how long ago was that, says Sean, removing the overlay and pulling back to around the 10 minute and 20 second mark. Here's when that second repush came up. Whoa, yeah, looks like we saw, I don't know, 10, 10 units. Is that accurate? Uh, it does look like that was accurate. So right when the medevacs popped out, all right, so that was at the 10 minute and 30 second mark. I round all the time. I do real quick and dirty. I'm not like, ooh, it was at 10 minute and 22. That means at, at 10 minute and 52, you know, I, I mean, to hell with all that. It's 10 minute and 30, so right now we should have about 13, uh, I would say 13 or 16, assuming it's constant. 13 or 16, assuming it's constant. Uh, and then right when these medevacs pop out, uh, should be around 11.45. I'm going to guess around um, 16, 16 or so. Let's go to the unit counting station. Whoa, whoa. It looks like our good friend Huck has not actually been making any units. Look, he still has those same 10 units. Look in the gateway count. Eight stalkers, two sentries. Now, someone might say something like, oh, that counting business didn't work. Well, yesterday, we talked about this. We said that guy should have 16 gateway units, and we looked, and he only had 12. And what was the reasoning? Well, it was because he went for gas geysers at his expansion, and he went for a robotics facility. And if we end up rechecking through that, we can be able to determine that that was indeed the cause. Now, there's something I want to begin to note here, which is, uh, let's see what... Greetorp's vision is at. I want to end up looking through this, and we're actually going to do a pretty stark contrast between this and the previous game, as I said before. Here comes the two medevacs going down. 12 minute mark, this ends up popping down. And there it ends up popping out. Oh, yes, how glorious we get to do all this cool damage and stuff. This actually makes me a little teensy bit leery. I kind of would have liked an SCV to lead there. Uh, because, I mean, really, I think that if Protoss were constantly making gateway units out of those three gateways, he could have, like, crushed this pretty darn hard. But regardless, there's the expansion going down. There's our 1-1 one, one upgrades. And we're going to start to see a lot of units get pumped out. This is kind of part of, during the replay, where I end up really trying to, um, get a sense of how far or ahead I feel and how far ahead it ends up looking. Like, I'm sure Greetorb didn't feel that far behind, but holy crap, did you see all those units just rip him apart? Did you see that? Ugh. I kind of want to find out what happened. So, that's when I actually generally pull the vision off, um, just a single player. I do vision of one player when I'm trying to, you know, copy his build exactly or get some pretty strong judgment calls made. And by the way, as we see, Huck was indeed not producing out of any of these gateways for a very long time. I want to end up sort of investigating. And what I would say was a big reasoning that Huck or Gritor fell really far behind is that he's just not adding on any additional gateways. And there's a little bit of the miss stim as he stims some of the units. But look at that. Five sentries popping out for Huck real quickly. Five more stalkers popping on out for Huck. Immortal. And then we're going to see another round of units end up popping up. Hmm. Hmm, I'm starting to do a little bit of calculating in my head. We're going to see how this ends up turning out. Yeah, you know, hmm. Counting is pretty gosh darned important. For me, like, doing stuff like this with my medevacs to be able to position, reposition his army is pretty important. Because I want to be able to have his whole army in one place. I mean, you can do something like have your whole army here, sprint up with three marauders, and start trying to pick this stuff off. And when he kills it, you scan. Or you can end up just rushing a unit in there. I prefer to just lead with a worker. Um, I think that's really critical. The only time I generally don't lead is when I just know that my timing push is just really strong. So I'm either going to be even or a little bit ahead. But... What I want to point out here is that there was a moment when Huck started really churning out of his five gateways. I want to look at exactly when that moment happened. 
So, I mean, we're defending, we're defending, 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 defending. This is where I get a little worried that we're going to fall behind. I mean, right now, what mode is Gritorp in? He's in, oh my god, I need to stay alive mode. Right. It's right when we see those three sentries, and I'm starting to go, ooh, Huck could be adding on more stuff, and that's exactly what Huck actually has the resources to be able to do. We start seeing those sentries pop down. When I see those sentries pop down, in my gut, I want to end up trying to make more barracks units. That's kind of how I'm feeling. Right? That makes intuitive sense, because if sentries indicate that he's making more unit-producing structures, I need to get more unit-producing structures. If stalkers are coming out, then that probably indicates I need to stay alive right now. I could probably go for upgrades, because he's not making more unit-producing structures, so he's not going to be so strong later. And if I can just defend now, I think I'm going to be in good shape. Here, Gretorp throws down two engineering bays. I think this may have been the, the, um, the concerning issue. I think that's what ended up coming back to haunt him. Because for a while, we're not actually seeing Huck make any units at all. He is just going for Dimas. For Dimas gateways and stuff. Just Dimas gateways. And there he is. Poke, poke, poke. Cool, 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 cool. Poke, poke, poke. And when is that first round? Yep, all sentries get popped down. Cool. All sentries get popped down. I'm going to do one more little counting exercise here. When could Gretorp have possibly... Because, I mean, this is... this is, uh, And if you don't know these numbers, this is where a lot of this counting comes in. Engineering Bay going down on 125. This is another 125, so that's 250 total. And then this is 100, 100, and this is 100, 100, as we can uh, see right there. Well, that's level 2, but I promise you they're 100, 100. So it's like 450 bucks. I mean, we could be in the same position. We could actually throw down um, two barracks and an Engineering Bay. And still be in almost the same spot. We'd be a little bit delayed on the upgrade. Right? I don't think that the two engineering bays on one base were necessarily correct. Because we're going to start to see, uh, in about three minutes, things really falling behind for Le Gris Corp. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing some harassment. I don't think there's anything wrong with sort of swinging around this side. So, now here's the part that I would label as pretty gosh darn hardcore. Um, because it's so easy to watch one piece of a game and to say something like, yeah, you know what, I guess I just need more tanks the next time. I guess this and I guess that. What you really need to be able to do is to say stuff like, well, when I saw those three sentries, and, um, or when I, th when I saw those three sentries, assuming he expanded, I probably should have, you know, known that he was adding on more of some unit-producing structure. So, probably should have been getting more barracks. And that double engineering bay, I probably should have rearranged those resources so that way I can end up getting two extra barracks to keep up with him. You can do that sort of subtle adjustment. If you want, you can be super extreme in your readjustment and say something like, Whoa, you know what? I... I am going to uh, just, like, um, not do this build at all. I'm actually going to go five barracks when I expand. Yeah, that's what I'm going to end up doing. And then you can sort of compare and contrast. Um, like that sort of thing. That's sort of the big obvious change. But I want to emphasize how subtle you can do adjustments. Like, instead of this engineering bay and that upgrade, just getting two more racks, maybe making an extra... Marine at some point in here. Gretorp's getting a little bit low on the money front. And I actually don't care to analyze this game that much more because I think that a pretty clear issue is that Gretorp ended up falling so far behind. I really think that the strength of this medevac build is in the ability to do a, a harassment early on to get like a really early harass, but if you can't get the really early harass up, then it ends up being significantly weaker. By the way, I'm really scared of ever moving anything in a blob like this anymore. I tend to do things in a little bit smaller chunks now because it's so easy to force field them apart. I want to compare this game to Huck vs. Gretorp um, number two. That's right. We looked at this game a little bit yesterday. Because in this game, we actually did see Gretorp get a lot more barracks a lot more sooner. So we're going to see the contrast. Again, we're going to do it from the Gretorp cam. 
the third part of this, and actually I'm going to do a third Terran vs. Protoss hardcore analysis, is just going to all be about various timings from Terran point of view. We're literally going to start to ignore Protoss and kind of pretend like, oh hey, I wonder what's the best way to get a factory in the relationship to this and that and how many units I have at this point in time. In other words, we're going to be comparing ourself to ourself, not ourself to the Protoss. So here's Greatorp, here's the Torp, he's going to end up, it looks like he's going for a uh, gas a little bit earlier. And here we end up seeing a little bit of a permutation. Last game, he went Barracks, Command Center. This game, he's going okay. Barracks, Refinery. Okay. That's fine. Permutations, we're, we're going to employ the same basic ideas that we did before. SCV ready. Oh, SCV Killing the production tab. Oh, dum, da, da, dum, bum, bum. oh, we scouted in. Oh, we didn't end up seeing anything, but that's fine. It's 4 minutes and 30 seconds. We know the stalker has just popped out. We're getting close to the 6 minute mark. We can probably scout around here. We can actually, I would say, yeah, we can reasonably scout around here till 5 minutes and 15 seconds. 5 minutes and 30, even 45 seconds with these units. Scouting for pylons. Because as we note, look, there's the pylon that's going down right now. And hey, look, there's the warp gate that's not yet done. Again, this is usual timing stuff. This is very, very basic timing. This has nothing to do with counting and judging his timing in a dynamic sense. Counting and scouting the front and seeing what he has in his army allows us to adjust things on the fly. But just knowing that six minutes, hell, that's when Warp Gate gets done. That's something that is just always going to be true no matter if you're playing Protoss vs. Protoss, Terran vs. Protoss, or any other opening, or what have you, or thereabouts, or ishedness. We're going to see that starport go down. It has that really nice timing again. Well, we're going to hit 7 minutes and 15 seconds in a moment, so we should start seeing around 12 gateway units. Well, it's actually around 7 minutes and 15, 7 minutes and 20 is when we would end up seeing around 12, but here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, you know, in a little bit we should see some more units warp in. In a little bit we should see some more units warp in. If we go to production, we can actually see that there's... Uh, we're going to see those three sentries warp in. So cool. Cool. So by the way, in the unit counting station, we have a bad 12-ish units. But notice, in terms of our counting of the front, guys, I'm going to ask you the question, same question we asked ourselves yesterday. Same question we asked ourselves yesterday. How many units is this? Eight? Okay, cool. That's right when we thought there was going to be eight. But there's four stalkers. See, whoa, five stalkers and three zealots. That, to me, indicates that Protoss can't be doing anything else. Can't be doing anything else at all. He really can't. And if we go to the uh, the everyman cam, we see that, indeed, Huck is, is, like, you know, trying to add on a little bit more. He's, in essence, not expanded. If he, if he had expanded, he really would not be able to do anything else. So let's go ahead and close that resource tab. Here's the swap coming up. Retorp is pretty solidly defended. Quite solidly defended. Again, we want to try to do a little bit more frontal counting. If only we could end up seeing this. But of course, Greetorp is trying to get his medevacs out. Oh my gosh, there's the supply depot finishing. Build another depot, Greetorp. Build another depot. Just speeding things right along. This game's a lot more tame than in the last game. Additional supply depots required. Okay, cool. When we're around 8 minutes and 30 seconds, that's when we expect our 13 to 16 count of units. We haven't really gotten the chance to do that. And of course, continuing things right along. Looks like we're going to see a drop end up moving out for Le Gritorp. I want to try to note this. Uh, Alright, there's 6. There's 5. There's 2. So that is 13 units total. A little late. Should be around 16. Why is that? Because he's going for the Nexus and he's going for the uh, Robo. And he's going for more gateways. He's doing all sorts of good jazz. Now, in the last game, what happened? In the last game, what happened? The real issue is that Greetorp ended up not having enough unit producing structures to keep up with Huck's production. We saw that even before the engagement, the foods were starting to do this, with Huck getting really high and Greetorp getting really low. And in this game, we're going to end up popping back. We're going to see there's the third gateway coming down. It looks a, a, a teensy, weensy, wansy bit late. But as we advance forward, as we advance forward, moving things right along, moving things right along. Yep, you know what? Here is the big push coming up by Huck. And we got a good chance to look at this unit count so we can begin to conclude that not only are there, you know, units here and likely not back at his main. 
but we can immediately begin making some pretty wild judgments about what's going on in the main. I mean, you've pretty much heard me bounce around three gateways, a robo, and an expansion in all these games. Protoss hasn't really been doing anything that differently, despite all the huge variety that we've looked at. Um, but, okay, we've seen Nexus now, we see a lot of Stalkers now, we see a good amount of Sentries now. So, given that we're at the 10-minute and 10-second mark, overall this unit count is a little bit lower than it should be. So, that's what the, the low unit count ended up being a result of, is these two gateways going down. But, looks like no robotics facility. Given the fact that there's this middle-ish amount of gateway units, and what's middle-ish? Well, we counted like 13 at the front, we see another 5 here. We can get a reasonable sense of what's going on. We're going to end up just watching this battle for a moment. More stalkers going down. And in the last game, when we saw that huge swell of gateways, Retorp was obviously in a much, much worse off position. And he will end up appropriately pulling back. What we're going to see is that the food counts are kind of even. I mean, uh, or 85 to 65. So the food counts are a little bit ahead from Gritor. I want to stare at these food counts a little bit with you. Now, actually, I should probably open up the production tab instead of staring at those too long. Yep, here we have the uh, two assimilators going down. Lots of good unit movement going on by Gritor. And now he's getting on these extra barracks, which he's turning into tech labs. He's getting an extra command center. He's doing harassment on the left. He's doing harassment on the right. Alright, that's looking so good. He's still managing to start to stay. Oh, it looks like he's maybe extending the lead a little bit. But what I want to point out is that this five barracks count, we want to be either matched with or ahead of these. Actually, let me pull this out. These six units. Otherwise, we're going to end. Or these six buildings. Otherwise, we're going to start to fall behind. Um, because well, I, I think one of the most obvious concepts is that if you don't have a lot of units making stuff and he has a lot of units making stuff doesn't matter really what you do he'll just end up with more shit and he'll kill you right so you have to be very very careful about that apparently every emergency that has ever happened in la is happening now it's been extremely windy today it's just a lot of deaths out on the road just blown clear over by the wind um, but I actually want to relook at that food differential while we ended up popping through here. Right at this moment when the Torp, our good friend Gretorp, started to add on a bunch more of those, um, <coughs> excuse me, a bunch more of those barracks. So we do see him ahead by about 20 food, and is Huck making anything? Well, it looks like no, he ended up losing his expansion nexus. Still not making anything. And Greetorp's not pulling that far ahead either. You know, that actually makes me a little nervous with this style. Because this kind of makes me feel as though, you know, if I didn't kill off this expansion, I might end up falling way far behind. Let me actually briefly check something in another game. In another game. You're noticing I'm bouncing back and forth between a lot of games. I'm trying to get a lot of analysis. This is... Kiwikaki versus Gritorp, and this is... Yeah, what I would be looking for right now is Kiwikaki against Select, where Select basically did that build, the exact one that we were looking at. Um, Kiwikaki opened a little differently, but um, Select tried to do some harassment with his medevac drops, and it didn't work very well. And then Select tried to add on some more barracks, and what I worry about is some sort of huge imbalance happening. I want to look at a game that really captures the style that I've been trying to explore. Right now, what I've concluded from all these games is a lot of really good timings, uh, a lot of really good ability to judge what he's doing based upon what I'm doing. And what we're going to see is we're going to see Druby open up with a big, big, freaking damn darn barracks composition. Yeah! Oh, it's going to be so huge. And I'm going to end up closing this production tab. This is going to be something wildly different. This is way different. And all the games we were pretty much looking at essentially the same opening. But in this one, it's going to be straight expand into four racks. Let's see what we can conclude. All right, we're just now hitting the 3 minute and 40 second mark. That first zealot should be popping out right now. Pretty basic timings. Here we have some barracks coming down. Oh, 4 minutes and 30 seconds. We should see a stalker coming out soon. I mean, as we can see, it looks like an early expand is coming. That's fine. I'm not really going to worry about that too much. 
We're gonna go back to the Druby Can. To the Druby Can. Four barracks coming down right now. Very good. Refinery going down. Even gooder. There's a little bit of pressure. What should be finishing right now? The warp gate? Yep, we just end up seeing the warp gate end up finishing. We haven't gotten a, uh, a real opportunity to scout what units he ends up having. So Druby's going to move out right now. He knows that there's this expansion here. Now, I want you to do some counting. I want you to do some counting with me. We saw an expand. We saw a gateway and another gateway being built. This actually is a gateway that was being built. But, you know, that's pretty much all we ended up seeing. Pretty common to see three gateways after an expand. So, based upon the Druby cam, how many warp gate units should be out right now? That's a pretty reasonable thing. I say three warp gate units max could pop out before the warp gate finishes. I think that's pretty reasonable. You can actually squeeze a fourth one out, but we're going to ignore it because I'm assuming he didn't do it, just because that's what I'm going to assume. Let's see. Uh, since I finished at six minutes, he can probably maybe have gotten two extra units out, and he probably is just now finishing up the warp gates for the other ones. So I would imagine maybe tops seven units, six, seven units. Um... One of those would probably have to be a sentry. So I'm actually envisioning maybe three zealots, three stalkers, and a sentry. Right? Just based upon the fact that I saw this timing. Is that correct or not? Wow! Looks like he was going sentry crazy in the unit counting station. Whoa! No, he actually had way more units. Uh, or way fewer units. Why is that? Why is that? Whoa! My judgment was off. That's actually exciting to me when I envision him having a much scarier army than he actually does uh okay so it looks like oh no he just made one stalker one stalker cool cool oh all right looks like he did get a second gas down right now yeah it looks like i was so freaking way darn off man yeah look he's not even able to make that many warp gate units right now ah so, this timing by Druby to move out is actually quite smart because, man, his opponent is broke. Maybe if he didn't make this robo and he made a whole bunch of stalkers, there'd be a potential problem. But that's okay. Druby's making marines oodles at a time. So the seven-minute move-out timings actually kick ass. It actually kicks ass. Let's see if we can make some more judgments. So it looks like we ended up seeing a lot of sentries. But Druby's going to take advantage of this. He's going to end up trying to build a command center. Well, we've been going for 52 minutes, so I can only analyze this for like three or four more minutes. Mm. But that's okay, because we'll end up doing a lot more in-depth stuff uh, on this one in the third part of this analysis. But you can slowly start to see that the overall theme is trying to just pin him on exactly what his army size is, checking and beginning to conclude things. So we can pretty clearly say that this is going to be kind of a safe expansion. A couple more Marines popping out, because really anything that Protoss tries to throw at us... Hey, we're at 8 minutes, so now I'm expecting more like 10 units um, out. But, pff, dude, what is this guy doing? How does he have no units? Look at this, he has like 7 units out right now. I hope he's like right at the end of a production cycle. Are more units getting warped in? I should sure hope so. I sure golly gosh darn hope so. Yeah, I guess he's getting some units, but he's going for that robo-facility rush. Yeah, you know what, so if I went up there and I only saw 9 units and I'm almost at 9 minutes, I'm just going to straight up conclude that he's going to be going for that Colossus. This is an absolutely consistent thing that we've seen throughout all time. Or he could be hiding units, but when I'm doing a push like this, he's going to want to make more units at his front, as we're seeing right there. But this little play by Druby is kick-ass. And this is what I'm talking about, baby. Look at that. Hey, we ended up moving forward. We didn't see that many units. Dzz, tech Labs getting thrown down on all of them. Three more barracks getting thrown down. Now, now, I'm starting to stumble across a style that I really like. And you know what? He even got this third base. He got this third mother right when he just thought that he was going to be safe because he was up against an early expanding player. I want to look at this more, but alas... We have to end. Uh, that's okay, there's going to be a third part on it where I'm actually going to start writing down uh, a crap ton more exact timings where we end up looking at how the starport lines up with the factory and all that good jazz and how uh, you know the upgrades can end up getting um, put in uh, there. And in particular, you know, I want to kind of note that... I want to note something that happens over time in this game 
where we're seeing all these barracks get thrown down by Druby. We see he has four barracks up right now. And right now, he's absolutely even in terms of the production. I want to see how Druby ends up getting ahead. In the other games, it was Gretorp struggling to be able to cope with that five gateway, one robo count from Huck. But now we're seeing Druby. Ah, he's not producing out of these, which kind of bums me out. Looks like he's trying to deal with some zealot harassment. But I want to see if Druby can actually swing really crazily far ahead. Because it's kind of funny, if you look at what Druby's doing, it looks kind of like what Gretorp's doing, except, ooh, Gretorp had his, you know, he had his fancy drop ships, and all that was amazing. But oh no, you know, even though he had those fancy drop ships, and even it's more upgrades, but you know what? This sort of play is just clean, straight up muscle and brunt. If Druby was producing out of these all the time, look, he's even missing a lot of production cycles. I'm actually going to back up a bit to when he really started to churn these guys out. He missed a ton of production cycles. Oops, I don't want to be hitting the pause. I want to be hitting the speed up. So he's not missing any production cycles. Not missing any. Not missing any. Not missing any. And then the flam flam flam. He ends up throwing down some tech labs. Ba 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 bam. Yeah. Barracks. 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 Yep, he's missing a lot of production right here. I'm going to select these. Yeah, production not going. Production not going. It looks like for 30 seconds. Okay, now he's getting some stuff. And then they all pop off. Yeah, you know, ain't the most constant production in the world. And yet still, he's actually beginning to pull quite a ways ahead of his opponent. He lost some units, like, just all of a sudden. But this style, I'm starting to really like quite a bit. I'm starting to see a relationship between when these things pop out and when all this good jazz ends up getting built. And although I want to put more numbers in, let's just take questions from the chat. Do -do 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 -do. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. Taking questions from the chat. Yes. Yes. Um, let us divine. Do -do 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 -do. Sorting through. Sorting through. Sorting through. <laughs> Let's see here. Hey, is Modes. As Dear Day 9, I noticed that in some of these games, even when the Terran went for a timing push before the Colossus came out, the Terran got smashed. Was this just a mistake of micro, or was it, you know, of timing and macro? Now, the real answer is... Depends on the situation, and it doesn't matter if I answer those specifically for those other games. But the important thing to note is that if you have really good timing and really good macro, then you can have a clear statement of, of whether the micro was an influence or not. For instance, if your macro is terrible and you engage in a battle with seven marauders... Then you can say something like, well, I don't know, maybe if I'd macroed better, I have like 3000 in the bank, I guess I need to spend my money better. What about that game uh, that we just saw between Huck and Gretorp, where Gretorp moved down and got demolished because he only had three barracks, whereas Huck had five gateways? What about that sort of game? Well, we can say that Huck, or we can say Gretorp was not missing any of his production timings, but I guess he arranged his build order a little bit bad, so that was probably a contributing factor. But if your build order is arranged pretty well and you're macroing well, then you can say, hey, the micro could have helped. If you get in a battle and you lose kind of bad, not horrifically, but kind of, and you have kind of some money in the bank and maybe not as many structures as you would have liked producing, you can't definitively conclude anything, and that just sucks. That's what I want for you, is to be able to do learning, to be able to flush that sort of thing out. Um, um, Ares Plus asking, in the second game, we saw Gretorp scan early. Uh, if he, you know, scouted with a worker instead of using a mule, do you think it would have made a huge difference? That's the sort of thing that I actually really like delving into. You generally hear me say, yeah, I'm going to completely discard that sort of junk. I'm not going to think about that at all. But if we end up pulling back to that, hey, that's an extra 270 minerals, we could have thrown down another barracks while we were just kind of hanging out. Maybe not gotten the add-on to it, but we could have built it. We could have thrown down maybe an extra engineering bay. Um... Um, let us see here. 
Um, yeah, here's a good question by Dentian11. So it's day nine. If I see a Protoss making a lot of sentries, how would I know which unit producing structure he is making? My unit composition is normally very Marauder heavy. If they make Void Rays, I automatically lose. How would I scout this properly? We actually didn't look at any Void Ray games. We looked at almost all games that were permutations of Protoss going some number of gateways and then getting some number of Colossi on two base. That was literally almost every game that we looked at because I want to focus on a small set. You now need to go out and look at all those games where Protoss ends up getting uh, Void Rays. And you can start to conclude the same things that we concluded, but in the Void Ray sense. We concluded over the last two days that as, as you're going for the Colossus, you can really only squeeze out one, maybe two units at a time from your warp gates. So suddenly, if you're going fast Colossus, sh total shutdown on your warp gate production. Like, literally dries up completely. Especially if you went for, like, gateways, then expand, then robo. Well, what in the case of Void Rays? Well, I w would imagine that almost no more Sentry is going to come out. Maybe you can only make things out of two uh, gateways. So when you start to see a whole lot of, you know, when you start to see his um, gateway unit dry up, you can maybe conclude something like, as the loudest jet plane goes overhead, you can maybe begin to conclude something like he could be going Colossus or Void Ray, but just not a lot of gateway units. So that means I'm going to switch to a big Marauder play, but also build some just-in-case turrets in my base. And I'm even going to add on some more barracks. So that way, my timing push is still strong if I'm against the Colossus, and I have enough time to make a bunch of Marines if he's going for Void Ray. Again, accounting for all these different possibilities. And I'm going to end up departing on that note next time. I'm hoping that in the next few days, I have some time to practice some Terran builds. Uh, maybe we'll end up looking at those games. If not, we're going to try to establish a frick ton of timings from all the good old Terran jazz. Um, so that way we can end up concluding um, some other things that we will be able to, to sort of uh, divine from everything. Next week, I think we're going to do a Terran for Zerg Hardcore in-depth thing. I might end up doing like a Zerg vs. Terran or another matchup just because we delve so deeply into the Terran race today. But either way, see you on the Team Liquid Star League on Saturday where I will be casting. That is all, ladies and gents. Happy Thursday. Have yourself a happy weekend.